So I want to talk about a very interesting point about cancer. Inside your mitochondria, which is the energy factor of your cell, which depends on oxygen, to a different metabolism, which is outside the mitochondria, okay? That's not dependent on oxygen. It ferments glucose, okay, and other things. But typically, we have this shift that occurs, and it's called the Warburg effect, okay? If we can know a little bit more about this shift, I think it's important in dealing with cancer. All cancer cells come from normal cells, okay? It's not like a, some viral infection. They come from normal cells. And there's something that occurs that converts them from a normal cell to a cancer cell. So one interesting difference between the normal cell and the cancer cell is the number of ATPs it generates. Now, ATP is the energy currency okay, of that cell. Okay, it's like a stored energy. With a normal cell, you generate like 30 ATP. A cancer cell only generates two, okay, two ATPs. So it's not very efficient. It's kind of a very crude motor. So that means that that cancer cell is extremely hungry and it'll work faster than normal cells. And so that's how it makes up the difference. It just works faster and it starts hogging all the, the nutrients and the sugar and things like that. So that's one thing. But the big question is what occurs at this switching point from a normal cell to a cancer cell, okay? That's kind of what I wanna dive into. And I'm gonna to try to make this extremely simple for you because there's a lot of complexities. In your mitochondria, you have a lot going on. You're basically taking food and turning it into this ATP, all right? And in the process, there's a lot of chemical uh, interaction going on and there's a lot of breaking things down, okay? And there's electrons involved, just like your battery. If you think about a battery, it has electrons and you're storing these electrons. If you can imagine, if you just punched holes in that battery and just drained all these electrons out, the battery would be completely dead. It wouldn't be recharged. So the storage of these electrons is very, very important. So you have this thing in the mitochondria, which is called the electron transport chain. And the only thing you need to know about that is it's involved in the energy storage in that ATP going from food to ATP, and so it contributes to energy. And it's very complex, and you have, um, actually, it's even named complexes, right? You have complex one, two, three, and four. And the area that I want to talk about is that fourth complex. And I want to give you the name for it, but just realize it's just like the, the last phase of this electron um, transportation mechanism. It's called cytochrome C oxidase. It's the enzyme that helps make oxygen and it's involved in these electron things. And the importance of why I'm bringing this up is that a dysfunction of that fourth complex, okay, that triggers this switch from a normal cell to an abnormal cancer cell. So you can kind of look at the mitochondria like a leaking battery. Someone punched holes in it and we're getting all these electrons that's, that are coming out and they're just destroying everything in that mitochondria. They're destroying the DNA, they're destroying the tissues, um, other parts of that cell. And now that cell can no longer produce oxygen. And so as a survival mechanism, your body turns on ancient genes that are outside the mitochondria and they adapt to survive without this oxygen, okay? And that is what cancer is. I mean, this is a completely new look or viewpoint on cancer, but it's a cell that is adapted to try to survive in an environment that just doesn't have oxygen. And the problem with cancer is it's growing so fast and it gets big, it starts to block things. If it blocks the blood vessels, you get edema. If it blocks your lung, you'll get a, a swelling in your lung. If it blocks your bile ducts, you'll get jaundice because it backs up into the liver. And this is what eventually kills you. Now, I just want to come back to this oxygen thing, right? Because now we have a, um, a diminished oxygen. The term for that is called hypoxia. Now, there's also a gene involved in this triggering or this switching from a normal cell to a cancer cell. And this gene is called hypoxia inducible factor 1 alpha. Okay, well, we're just going to call it HIF-1 alpha. 
And all you need to know is that it's involved in hypoxia, a lack of oxygen. So it's this lack of oxygen that's involved in this switching mechanism. And this is kind of really important to know, especially since this gene is involved and a lot of new cancer therapies are trying to inhibit that gene. But hypoxia is a big, big problem. In fact, hypoxia is the main feature in tumors. So you have this situation where you have not enough oxygen, but they're able to survive. And normal cells can't survive without oxygen. So I've done a lot of videos on cancer. Okay, I have even a protocol that I recommend and um, talking about a lot of different um, strategies and what foods to eat and what nutrition to take, et cetera, et cetera. But there is one really important additional thing I would add to your protocol that I haven't talked about in other videos. And this substance that I'm going to talk about can act as an alternative acceptor of electrons. You can look at it like a sponge that soaks up electrons and it specifically targets that fourth complex, that cytochrome C oxidase, that thing that actually makes oxygen, that it's not making oxygen. It targets that and bypasses that so you can make oxygen again and you can make ATP again. And so it's a substance that can overcome hypoxia, which basically can make O2 available again. And this substance is actually used in pretty much every emergency room, okay, by emergency room doctors. And it's used to counter carbon monoxide poisoning, okay, and cyanide poisoning and other poisonings. And it just so happens that cyanide poisoning and carbon monoxide poisoning also targets and destroys that fourth complex that I just mentioned. And this substance is methylene blue. Methylene blue was one of the first drugs used in the medical profession. Again, they used it, I think, for an, um, an anti-malarial or it could have been an antidepressant in the late 1800s. But of course, you can't patent it now and there's not a lot of money in it. But apparently, there is a tremendous amount of research especially with cancer. I mean, there's like over a hundred years of research on this substance, okay? And it's actually a blue dye. And uh, it's, it's actually quite fascinating. But it does a lot, but one of the things it does is it helps to bypass damage within your mitochondria and helps to soak up the electrons that are creating damage. So I wanted to tell you about it and put it within your awareness so you have an additional thing to help you in various health conditions. I mean, just type in Google any cancer, okay, in methylene blue. Also type in uh, methylene blue in Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or pretty much any condition and you probably will find a research study on it. It's quite fascinating. And of course, the uh, beneficial effects of methylene blue occurred when you're taking low doses. And uh, the dose I would recommend would be like 20 drops, maybe 40 drops uh, in some water Maybe you want to put some electrolyte powder or something just to cover the taste. Don't drink it. Drink it with a straw because it will turn your lips blue. It does uh, stain your urine um, green. So if you're female and you're married and uh, your husband's on this product, um, you'll quickly be able to see if he's able to urinate actually inside the toilet and not outside the toilet because it will stain certain things green. Now, there's three grades of methylene blue. The one that you want to get is the pharmaceutical grade. It's called USP grade. That's the one I would recommend. And if you haven't seen my other video on methylene blue, I put that one up right here. Check it out.